Okay, I was telling Melanie this is like Christmas Part 3. And she said, Part 3? I'm like, well, this is definitely a sequel. This is what's arrived in the last three days. Ow. Now what else is there? We're making our Oogie Boogie costume yesterday. We burnt and cut the shit out of ourselves anyway, so. And that little cut won't matter. Ooh. Chris Saris is my type of bloke. Double wrapped it in the and the priority double. Double bubble. Oh, I told, oh, yeah. I was telling her about this. How to rob a bank. Game. I told her about this. I was like, yeah. You learn how to rob a bank and you get to be the banker of the robbers. And she's like, oh, great. I'm teaching Lucy how to be a heister. It was 15 bucks at half price books, and I was like, this little box? Come on. I found it for, well, I didn't find it. I bid on it, and I won it for one cent plus 4.95 postage. I was like, heck yeah, please. I honestly don't know what half of this shit is. Aw, oh, dang. I might lose some of these to, uh, to Melanie. The witches. Suspicion, betrayal, and hysteria in 1692 Salem. Already lost it. On monsters and marvels. Translate with introduction and notes from Janice Pallister. This is uh, Ambrose Paré. Uh, oh, this is about, yeah, this is a kind of a cornucopia of um, physical abnormalities and uh, so-called freaks in human anatomy. <laughs> and it's described by Bernard Wood of Nature as a delightfully whimsical book. I'm not even talking about all the terror and hardship those people probably went through. But then again, I bought a book on it, so what are you going to do? Uh, Albion. A Guide to Legendary Britain. Ooh, this is such a thick, awesome edition right here. <laughs> so I am thick. pumped. And it's got a nude chick on the front with a knight. What do you what else are you gonna do? Is there like a Oh, there's a snake. That might be um That might be Saint George and the Dragon. Sometimes um, they use the term dragon and they're actually talking about a big snake. Have you ever wondered how the legends of Britain arose? The tales of black dogs and screaming skulls, bogies and bull beggars, giants and dragons, treasure legends and phantom horsemen, wizards and sleeping heroes, omens and death warnings. Look at that. Is there something I can give for a... Okay. Here's my hand, and that's the thickness of that book. That gives you any kind of perspective. Awesome. What an awesome, thick little package that was. I wonder who that reminds me of. Nothing? I get nothing for that? Damn. I'm getting nothing nowadays. What about the quickness? <laughs> what about the quickness is what I normally say. Because, I mean, even if it's a horrific, horrifically horrible pun or some kind of perverted nonsense, at least you ought to give me something for the quickness. Okay, good God. This is like fortified like hell on the outside. It's got this little dainty tissue paper on the inside. Hello, Mrs. Doubt Tissue. I'm just going to cover my books and make sure they're okay. Even though it beat the fucking back on the inside. But I think it told me this one was water damage. Caitlin R. Kiernan. The Drowning Girl. I think this is the first one. I don't know if it's a trilogy. It might be a series. But I had read um, some Caitlin R. Kiernan before, and I, I'm i neglecting the name of it, but I remember really liking it. So I got that one. 
Year of Wonders. Geraldine Brooks, Novel of the Plague. I actually thought that uh, Melanie might be interested in this one too. Infected bolt of cloth carries plague from London to an isolated mountain vi village. A village. A housemaid named Anna Frith emerges as an unlikely heroine and leader. In the times of the Rona. Oh, Jesus. I thought she might be interested in that. What? Nothing. She listens to TikTok all freaking day. I say Rona and she freaks out. Um, oh, here's a monster. I don't know if this is... Oh. Temple by Matthew Riley. I think this is kind of like a... Um, mummy Indiana Jones National Treasure type thing. Um, but... <gasps> Good golly. There's a monster, too. Look at that thing. It's, uh... Where the hell? It's almost 800 pages for this thing. I think that I got that lot for, like, $7. Deep in the jungles of Peru, the contest of the century is underway. It's a race to locate a legendary Incan idol. Fun times. I love it how I get, like, these totally gigantic intellectual things, and then... I just get absolute fluff. Look at this monster. This thing is actually physically heavy. When Lucy gave this to me yesterday, I was like, what the hell is that? Can't say hell. What? I can't say hell? Um, if I remember correctly, they said hell in uh, Hocus Pocus like three times, so. Not talking about the place. Just. You're getting me in trouble for you. It must be incredibly interesting just watching me having trouble opening these things. Okay. Is that a sandwich you'd like to take a bite out of or what? Look at this. Oh. Yummy. Blood Kin. By Steve Rasnick Tim. That is a great freaking cover. A, a dark southern gothic vision of ghosts, witchcraft, secret powers, snake handling, kudzu, maludgeons, and the Great Depression. Holy crap! They should have thrown in the kitchen sink while they were at it. This is going to be a good one. During the Halloween uh, uh, season, I usually find these lists that people put out on different newspapers and whatnot. And they're talking about, you know, 20 Halloween or 20 uh, horror books you've never read. And usually I'm like, yeah, right. But I've been finding a lot lately I haven't heard of. Here's a good collection. I ended up having to do a little bit of searching on this. Folk and Fairy Tales. Edited by Martin Hallett and Barbara Krasik. Um, fourth edition. I had seen the first edition somewhere. And it's... Uh, it's a rare thing when they don't really enhance an edition over time. I had almost clicked off on the second edition, then I found a fourth edition that was available. Ended up having a lot more stuff. It basically uh, juxtapositions a bunch of different fairy tales and histories and uh, annotations and whatnot telling you what's up with fairy tales, which interests the hell out of me. Okay, this is Curse of the Ancients. This is one of, uh, kind of a, I wouldn't say it's a new genre or subgenre. It's been around for a while, but, uh, I've really started getting into it. This is one of what they call the weird westerns. Uh, 1870s, a peaceful man in Iowa territory. The townspeople dislike their new visitor, an Indian man, but they're about to find out the color of his skin is the least of their worries. Supernatural forces are at work, and the body count is rising. Currents of the Ancients. I think this is actually um, one of a trilogy, but I found uh, I found a few on Amazon that are only available uh, for ebooks. Otherwise, I'd I'd buy them outright, and it's been a lot of fun. Dino Apocalypse Now by Chuck Wendig. Um, I didn't even know this existed. I knew Chuck Wendig existed. Look at this, that art. That is awesome. I think in the center. No. I'm wrong. I don't know who that is. I thought at first it was um, Professor Khan. Uh, when the Century Club is called in to prevent the assassination of FDR, 
Oh, there's, uh, there's Professor Khan right there. I love smart ape stories. Um, it's another day on the job, but what they discover is not just the president, was not just the president, but the entire world in jeopardy. When, when psychic dinosaurs taking over Manhattan and beyond, it's up to Sally Slick, Jet Black, Max Silver, and the other Centurions to save humanity from extinction. Fun times. I'd actually seen uh, the Professor Khan books at Half Price Books, and I found those first, and I found out they came from that, so I was like, yes. Someone like me. M.R. Carey. It's by the um, the author of The Girl with All the Gifts, which was awesome. Um, M.R. Carey is either deranged or brilliant or both. Jonathan Mayberry. Of course, he would chime in. Lover or hater, there's two sides to every story. Uh, it's about this girl. She's, I think she's traveling, but she's got some kind of supernatural secret. I don't know a whole lot about it. But uh, that's a lot of times that's the best way to go through. This is a cool cover because you kind of see the two sides to the character, and this one's got like a blur to it where you're not sure how she's going to turn out. That's awesome. R.S. Belcher, Six Gun Tarot. That's in another one of those uh, weird westerns. Six Gun Tarot. It was a jaw dropping first novel that explodes across John. Here's Jonathan Mayberry again. What in the hell? That guy must just like sit around ask, you know, begging people to, to do blurbs on stuff. Or he's incredibly uh, prolific and sophisticated, and I'm just being a dick. I don't know. A steampunk romp through a mythic west drenched in blood and magic. Yeah. And that cover is awesome. It's totally um, reminiscent of uh, the Gunslinger Dark Tower series. Rock. Okay. <laughs> That has been stretched so far that it maintains its shape. Man, that must have been a pain in the ass putting that together. Okay. Big ol' cardboard from Discover Books. Another repository for cheap as hell on the internet. I think this is the one that delves kind of in the sort of young adult territory, but... There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. Uh, someone Inside Your House is a heart-pounding page turn with an outstanding cast of characters, deliciously creepy setting, and an absolutely merciless body count. Best read at night with a big bowl of popcorn. So this is gonna this is gonna be sort of like I don't know if it's a deconstruction, but it's probably a celebration of um, sort of like teenage slasher. Fun times. Although, when you have a gigantic monster like this, and then you open that little piddly envelope, it's like, yeah, that's all you got for me? Let's see. There's another cardboard one. Okay. Now, apparently, this is another one that has some... Uh, that was involved in sort of like the 20 books you've never heard of. The Watcher by Charles McLean. Um, this is included in a bunch of horror you've never read, but they also kind of say, uh, look how dapper that guy looks. Looks like he's about to become American Psycho or something. Uh, brilliant, terrifying, and dazzling shocker of a novel. Created a story that rises to an unprecedented pitch of horror, and yet conveys a literary strength and psychological truth that's made such books as Lord of the Flies memorable. So I think this is a book where it's, uh, it's not slam-bang... Uh, blood everywhere type of horror, but it's something that will just like chill you to your core because it'll um, It'll be like believable And I have no idea what those dogs are all about. This is a very mysterious cover and it's kind of um, Sparse so it doesn't give everything away It's very very interesting a lot of times some of the best horror there is will hide behind um, really not necessarily nondescript, but uh, Just kind of quiet covers like this and they end up being totally awesome so cold the river, Michael. I think it's Karida. I'm not sure how to um, pronounce that. Fast, airy chill over a book that'll make you shiver. I think this might be kind of like an environmental horror book, where um, actually now that I think about it, I think this takes place in um, uh, West Baden, Baden, West Baden, 
by French Lick, where they have the uh, they have that old sulfur spring spa that people used to go to and stuff. I think that this has to do with the sulfur spring being um, like supernaturally tainted in some way. It, uh, it's let's see, it's about millionaires. Oh yeah, Shaw discovers a spring whose water has unfathomable powers and a glorious domed hotel. That's the West Baden Hotel with that dome in there. People were constantly getting married there. Um, it's been restored to her former glory, but something else has been restored. A long-forgotten evil. So cold the river. That's going to be awesome. Okay. I think this is the last one. And this is a monster, too. Look at that puppy. Uh, let's see. Wow, they had to stack them. Side by side, fitness baby. Another Chuck Wendig, Blackbirds. Um, I had gotten um, one, I think it was called Bluebell or something like that. Trailer park tension, horrified hilarity, and sheer terror mixed with deft characterization of razor plotting. And an awesome cover to boot. Miriam Black knows when you will die. Still in her early 20s, she's seen, foreseen hundreds of car crashes, heart attacks, strokes, and suicides. Slow deaths by cancer. But when Miriam hitches a ride with truck driver Lewis Darling and shakes his hand, she sees in 30 days, he will be gruesomely murdered and will call her name. Awesome blurb. That's like totally provocative. And it kind of has that final destination feel too. Of knowing when your time has come. The Hatching by Ezekiel Boone. I've almost, uh, I almost bought, I think it's called Skitter, which is the sequel to this about like gigantic mutant spiders like overrunning the city. This is the first in that series. And I always see Skitter, but I never see The Hatching. So that makes me think that people really like The Hatching and don't get rid of it. And then they buy the sequel and they get rid of that. That may not mean that. I don't know. Um... You know those people who claim spiders are more afraid of us than we are of them? When it comes to the hatching, they lied. Great, gory, fun, and creepy in every sense of the word. John Connolly. And here's Michael Carida. I think that um, these, this is, there's a real community. There's a, uh, I mean, everybody knows there's a horror community. But I think there's a lot more than they, um, they let on. And it has to do with a lot of authors, too. Oceans at, the Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I saw um, a documentary on Neil Gaiman not too long ago, and he had spoken about um, how his hometown uh, related to this. Like, I I think at the end of the road he lived on was water, and he just used that as, a, uh, as an inspiration for this. I'm not exactly sure why some paperbacks will do this. They'll have the flap on it as if it's a dust cover. Not sure if that's meant to act as a bookmark. I'm not so sure I like that. When it, when it comes to using it as a bookmark, because that ends up ruining your book. But a middle aged man returns to his childhood home to attend a funeral. He's drawn at the farm, farm at the end of the road, where he, when he was seven, he encountered a most remarkable girl. He hasn't thought of her in decade, decades, but yet he sits by the pond. It all comes flooding back, and it's a past too strange, too frightening, and too dangerous to have happened to anyone, let alone a small boy. This is one of those modern fairy tales that people really uh, have gotten immersed in. On the back of this, it's not a bunch of authors, it's a bunch of uh, authorities. Best books of the year, Time Magazine, Goodreads, NPR. It's amazing that Goodreads has uh, risen to the heights. Oh, <laughs> Well, here we go. I ended up getting a skitter too, it looks like. So I've got the sequel. We'll see if it holds up. But, uh, it was available, so, you know, yeah. So this is, I think that, um, the hatching takes place in, in one city, and then this is basically when it goes global. And, let's see. It says America. Let's see. I can't tell, I don't know where, uh, where the hatching started, because it says America... You're on your own. So maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it started in Europe in the first one, then it goes to America here. 
Joseph Campbell, The Mythic Dimension, Selected Essays. I've got a lot of stuff by Joseph Campbell, um, all the biggies, Here with a Thousand Faces, um, Power of Myth, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is a Selected Essays from 59 to 87, which uh, sometimes it's, it's a lot more interesting when you get the non-collected stuff, or in this case, collected here, but not collected in their big um, books. You might get an extra dimension and stuff. Well, this is a dimension. There you go. I wasn't trying to do that. Um, from Psychology of the Cult, from Thomas Mann to the Grateful Dead, these playful and erudite writings reveal the threads of myth that are deeply woven into the fabric of our culture. I've been really on a tip of trying to find out the myths um, lately. The Mammoth Book of Body Horror. Fun times. Uh, it's got all the biggies in there. Clive Barker, Neil Gaiman, James Herbert, Stephen King. The James Herbert interests me a lot because uh, I don't see a lot of his short stuff. Brian Lumley. Uh, it's got Who's Goes There. I think this has got all the biggies in there. Uh, it's got the inspirations for Reanimator, uh, The Fly. Let's see. Oh, it says a chilling story about Lovecraft's disciple, Robert Block. I wonder if he'd grown beyond being said that he's Lovecraft's disciple. I mean, the guy wrote Psycho. I think you can kind of give him his own due now. Thanks. Uh, who goes there? Inspiration for the thing. Um, okay, that's weird. It's got a couple of things talking about movies. It's like, this is a book, though. You're talking about stories here. 25 stories of transformation, mutation, and contagion. Rona! Yet again. <laughs> I was waiting for you to look over at me. Uh, tease the, oh, Tis the Season to be Jelly by Richard Matheson. Hell yeah. Let's see. Okay, cool. It looks like half of these I've read before but would love to read again, and half of them I've never heard of, so that's good. Sorry, I don't understand. I don't understand you either, bitch. Sorry. Sometimes she pisses me off. Interjecting in my fucking show. Um, I can say whatever the hell I want whenever the hell I want. The Oxford Companion to Fairy Tales. This is physically heavy. It's so dense. Oh, 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 look at that print. It looks like just like a gray page. It's so dense. Um, the Western Fairy Tale Tradition from Medieval to Modern. Edited by Jack Zipes, who... Jack Zipes is all over the place when it comes to fairy tale stuff. And I'll get the Oxford Companion to everything, really. If it says the Oxford Companion, I'll buy it no matter what it is. Because it has everything you'd ever want to know. From its roots in the oral tradition to the sophisticated postmodernist reworkings of the present day. Otherwise known as poop. Um, let's see. It's got shit tons of stories in here. Writers from the past talking about it and the present, including Margaret Atwood. Hell yeppy. Terry Patchett is also in the list. Salman Rushdie. Uh, oh, man, it's got a bunch of illustrators. It's talking about Quentin Blake, Raymond Briggs, Gustav Doré. Uh, Morris Sendak. Associated topics, advertising, cartoons, Disney, fantasy literature, feminism, opera, oral tradition, psychology, science fiction, television, Victorian fa fairy painting. I don't know exactly what that's talking about, but this is going to be dense and awesome, just like me. And there are a ton more that I've gotten in the last little while. I actually had to get a new bookcase to go over them. So if those interest you and you want me to do another one, just let me know. Well, I wake up this morning and Magoose comes in with an entire new batch that had been sitting out there this morning. And they were ice cold, but I didn't want to wait, so here's your hot late. So here I am thinking I'm done. Lucy comes in with this fantastic package here. Green, just like the logo. And I was like, oh my god. There's more yet to come. I was like, I'm not waiting. I'm doing it now. You know, I'm still I'm still editing the damn thing anyway. It took freaking forever. I lost half of it. But it's... uh. It's a sign of a capricious life when, you know, a little girl is, is going to 
going to the sitters and she's going to be doing e-learning today due to COVID breakout and all this shit and Melanie's going to work and they're taking the little one to where he's going and I'm still in bed. So, <laughs> and I'm opening up books to boot, you know, what are you going to do? But anyways, I just thought I would add these to the end, uh, almost like a, a stinger scene, I guess you'd say. Hopefully everybody's still watching. But, oh boy, yeah, this this is fun. I, I do remember these. So, uh, that's, that's kind of covered up, but... The world ends in Hickory Hollow. This is another one of those that uh, I had never heard of. And it has that, uh, not necessarily vague, but it doesn't give you a whole lot to work with. Although it, it does show kind of like the ruins of um, of some civilization, you know, with the, when you got the, the black top all cracked and pocked and stuff. Um, it says, Ardath Mayhar... Andre Norton says, one of the outstanding writers of fantasy. I'd never heard of this, um, but then it was in one of those lists. And so, this is a post-apocalyptic. Uh, it's an East, Te East Texas scrubland. Uh, dark and devilish mystery of a civilization gone wild. A tribe of harpy-like women seduced by madness and driven to bloodlust and violence. You gotta love that. So yeah, I love the bleakness of this cover. It's fantastic. It's, uh, well, I was going to say it was road-like, but there you go. I mean, you can't put too fine a point on it than that. So that's that. Let's see. Ooh, fun times. The Ides of Tomorrow. Original science fiction, Tales of Horror. I think this is when it says science fiction tells of horror. There's uh, that all this block, Harlan Ellison. There's block again. You know that old disciple of Lovecraft, as uh, as that one said. If I was him, I would be pretty pissed about that. I'm not so sure he's still around. But um, this one has been well read. I'm actually gonna have to. I'm gonna have to fix this one. I've got this fantastic um, low pH glue, binding glue that I'll use to fix that with, but beware the future, it is a great unknown. As inevitable as uncertain in its manifestations, the future brings dreams and horrors to light. I think this is definitely one of those collections that has um, stuff in there where people who are used to their human body wake, wake up in this cold machine-like existence and stuff. That's Harlan Ellison. I'd be surprised if it's not... Um, I have no mouth and I must scream in this one. That's a really strange one. Um, nope, it's not. It's totally different. So I haven't... Um, in the House of the Worm, George R. R. Martin. There you go. The Head by Robert Block. The Eeriest Ruined Dawn World. Fritz Lieber. Or Lieber. I'm not sure. Um... This is going to be great. So this is a this is just one one package. It doesn't have a ton in there, but it was good for a little postscript, I think. Um, especially when you have something like Horrors Beyond Two: Stories of Strange Creatures. That is a fantastic. You know what? Flat out. I think that's supposed to be the resonator from uh, from from beyond. I mean, that would make sense. Horrors beyond too. I bet that's the resonator because when the resonator kicked on, you saw these uh, ultraviolet lights and you could see things swimming around in the air that you wouldn't see on our normal plane. So, or maybe it's just referring to that. Maybe that's supposed to just give you an. What? You've got to be shitting me. If this doesn't have the... Gene O'Neill, Richard... If this doesn't have all of the author's signatures in here, then it's got most of them. Can you fucking believe that? They didn't even mention that. 
What a hot late. Good grief. That is awesome. And you know, normally I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm not looking around for that. I don't try to get that. But it tickles the living hell out of me when it's accidentally signed. And it looks like, it, if it's not everybody, it's almost everybody. And there's William Dietz, Richard Lupoff, A. Anastasio, Jay Castleberg, Robert Weinberg, John Shirley, Rainey, Camp Gene O'Neill, Dave Neal Wilson, Lucien Solbon, C.J. Henderson, Paul Melchek, uh, Greg Beatty, Ekaterina Seda, Mikhail Valencia, Bella Chansky, Tim Kern, Ron Shefflett, Alexis uh, Glenn Leitner, John Sinceri, and William Jones. That might be absolutely everybody. I'm going to have to go through and see about that. Horrors Beyond Two, Stories of Strange Creations. Awesome. That cover alone is worth it. And then you open it up and everybody put their Hancock on here. And it's... Wow, this is going to be great. Holy shit. Isolation Point, California. Okay, that's John Shirley. I think that he... He may have been the one that wrote... I get Shirley and Steakley mixed up. He may have been the one that wrote Vampires. I can't remember now. But, um... Hotness. The Monster in the Lake. Or a monster in the lake. The manuscript in the drawer. When the stars fell. I'm guessing that this is going to be... They're going to be... Well, it says Elder Signs Press. So they're trying... I think they're going for the Lovecraftian. But, um... Explore terrifying landscapes of science unbound. Good... Galloping... Crap. Unbelievable. What a last-minute haul. Gee, I am blown away by that. That is the coolest. So anyway, there you go. Um, I'm, a, I'm totally in awe of that. I mean, it's just it's a simple thing, but I never looked for it. There was. Holy crap. That is the coolest. So um, there you go, post group on the the hot late for um, for this first uh, bed hair book fair. I think it's turned out pretty good. 